world of undisclosed location in the great western desert in the land of the free and autonomous Native American people, the 2024 presidential campaign in the next time to return all U.S. land back to their own homes. Back to the this is the Ben Zion Podcast. I'm sure we're going to do a show about uh, the, uh, the distinction between um, <clears throat> kind of uh, collectivism uh, that I have tried to promote more recently and um, and transhumanism and you can look at a nice a little graphic that describes how these are worlds apart um, uh, transhumanism should not be the property of capitalists um, as you would see on this um, um, uh, political compass uh, pol even ideas of a political compass um, are problematic there's no way to really um, uh, uh, capture the, the, the problems of the world and, and the things that we face in um, in this um, on these two vectors, <laughs> um, but um, also you should need to resist the urge uh, to um, uh, uh, when you say this uh, to uh, uh, um, uh, to to eliminate uh, class concerns from from the equation, which is overwhelmingly what these capitalist transhumanists will do. I've said on this uh, show a few times that there's this guy uh, named Zoltan Isfin. Um, who um, who writes uh, um, uh, for uh, a different uh, 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 capitalist Western publications and is uh, uh, a figure of capitalist transhumanism. And uh, he was the founder, uh, quote, founder of the United States Transhumanist Party, um, which he did found, but he also kind of stole, um, he IP trolled uh, the people who are using that name. Uh, but one of these people is an example of this kind of folly. And Zoltan Isfin does this too, all of these people, uh, do this. Uh, that's to say that they, um, they'll they say, do this Andrew Yang thing. Uh, we're not uh, left or right, we want to move forward. Which uh, um, sounds logical, as uh, slogans often do, but um, on further analysis is complete nonsense. Um, it, it, all of these people are very, very invested in making uh, you think that the idea of concern for working people and material conditions is, um, is something that is of no great import, and um, um, so that that is why uh, they say that they're not left. Uh, communists uh, criticize the word left in similar way, more legitimately, um, because um, they say, "Well, why are you um, why are you calling yourself a leftist? Um, why are you not just a revolutionary communist? A more logical extension of all of that." Um, uh, well, the people because the people who call themselves leftists are affected by Mao's liberal rot in the collective, they're still um, not too interested in um, doing what it takes uh, uh, to spearhead a revolution, to be involved in that, uh, to promote that. Uh, so they are, um, you know, I'm a democratic socialist. Oh, really? Socialists are, socialism is inherently democratic. So what you're really doing is protecting capitalists. Let's not kid yourself. That's what, that's what the democratic and democratic socialism means. There's a huge amount of State Department propaganda um, out there to make you believe that Socialism is undemocratic, and this um, hot mess of uh, of capitalism is 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 the better option there. None of that even passes the laugh test. No, and virtually no serious thinker um, uh, would even entertain any of that. But it's this massive uh, popular mythology, um, um, and this is the action of of people like Zoltan Isfin, of people like these uh, capitalist transhumanists who mostly are um, either State Department assets. Yeah, that's why I said. On the show, you might have met some stupid people in your life, but you have not met people as stupid as transhumanists, um, because they're basically, you know, a couple of cops. Um, uh, all of these uh, kind of um, uh, uh, think tank people and people who pretty well are just taking orders from the State Department, fascists, and all of the people, which isn't very many, who are dumb enough um, to just take their marching orders from fascists, um, and uh, um, that's. That's not a super great thing to be. And you can see this, um, you know, this, uh, this. When you look at this political compass, you see uh, up here, hive mind collectivism, um, is the um, thing that's described as being outside of the political compass, uh, because it's, um, um, and that's, uh, that's a framing, a uh, kind of a right wing framing, you might at first glance. But also, um, you're talking about something that's not physically human anymore. So maybe it is acceptable to say that that's outside of the the, the sphere the the sphere of things um, in that in that one case. Um, um, but um, none, of, none of this none of this is new stuff, right? 
um, people have been able to game this stuff out. And that's to say people have been, not ordinary people haven't had that luxury, uh, but um, people that are getting paid a quarter million dollars a year uh, to work for the Rand Corporation or, um, you know, and take their marching orders from the State Department, um, the same way all of these techies and capitalists, uh, transhumanists and futurists do, um, people have been doing this for three quarters of a century. Um, and uh, so they've been able to figure out that um, this um, technological singularity type effects are coming. You see that artificial general intelligence is now among us. Um, and they, they've known that for quite some time, um, that, that this is a real possibility. Um, and um, um, they know that uh, the hive mind collectivism is the ultimate um, uh, path for humanity in this. Um, it is uh, the thing that will save us from annihilation. Um, the alternatives are, are falling short of, of, of that. Um, and um, I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, but um, so, th so these people, um, uh, techno futurists like to pretend that they're, every time they open their mouth, they're uh, great, issuing forth some great revelation. Um, uh, but um, this kind of thing has been pretty well understood by a rightist for a while. And that's why the sham, capitalist transhumanism, has been promoted over um, this um, hive mind collectivism, um, which is, in almost every respect, the 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 better form, or certainly purer form of the thing. Um, and they because um, it's they know the tech is the most powerful um, uh, weapon ever to exist in 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 revolutionary terms, and um, they have been withholding all of this information from you. And you say, well, you know, I can, but. It, if you if you search hive mind collectivism, if you do a Google search of it, you'll find virtually nothing. You find a few um, um, right wing personalities commenting on the idea. You'll mostly f be redirected to uh, science fiction stories. Perhaps again, perhaps that's legitimate <laughs> um, because um, um, hive minds don't exist right now. Um, but the point is, um, even even though this um, uh, this thing remains. Um, in uh, speculative uh, technology, and um, some of it is prototypes, so let's say emerging technology, um, it um, um, it could have been uh, used um, uh, by uh, revolutionary uh, figures, um, absent this level of manipulation on the part of uh, the capitalist class, um, to um, uh, inspire people uh, to to move in this direction. Um, and but that's not been the case. Um, and um, that's because of people not very dissimilar from the people that work at the Transhumanist Party, um, a party that um, uh, nominated myself um, in an election uh, to be their presidential candidate. Um, I then um, unnominated myself in early 2020 as I started to become more and more aware of these things, uh, but also as I became started to become more and more aware of who the Transhumanist Party was. As you might recall, in early 2020, there was um, a a Contagion, which is still ongoing, this plague is still uh, ravaging this country. We're in denial about it. A thousand, the same number of people died in 2022 um, as in 2021, 2020. Um, uh, but the only thing that changed is people have been lulled into a false sense of security uh, by um, um, they've grown fatigued of it supposedly. They've been lulled into a sense of uh, of security by uh, the um, this new um, subset of a, a business that existed, uh, uh, vaccines. Uh, the, but this shouldn't be a business, right? It should be a, a part of a public health service, uh, something that's done outside of uh, profit considerations, um, as all things ultimately should be. Um, and um, but they built this uh, new business, and, and this new business has um, um, been presented as the alternative. But it's a band-aid on a gaping gunshot wound um, uh, that is thousands of people dying every day um, of of a plague, and people ignoring it uh, because the symptoms are not so terribly noticeable. And uh, because um, they have been conditioned uh, to to ignore this, and and the transhumanist party was not instrumental in um, in this um, in this lack of building a public health service in 2020. They're a small organization, but they were doing that same work. This vast network of these people, uh, you know, like I said, this you know the Rand Corporation people like that have been doing this uh, longer than you've been alive, um, and uh, these these kind of things have continued to branch out. And, Take further and further root in American institutions, um, and have been empowered to do so by the United States as this fascist country. But they can't uh, afford to be perceived too much as fascists, um, uh, so they have to uh, find a lot of sneaky ways uh, to undermine this sort of thing. 
Um, and as, uh, the, the Transhumanist Party, I realized, uh, was an organization that when the chips were down, uh, when uh, people needed them to uh, not, not, uh, not to prattle on about uh, a radical life extension, but actually do the work of ordinary life extension of, of saving people's uh, lives in a pandemic by supporting a public health service, they were doing quite the opposite, uh, making the case for um, stripping away of the public health service features in, um, in, in, in that, at that very moment. And this was uh, at the time when I was um, on an assignment for them and got coronavirus. And people around me all contracted coronavirus from that contact and subsequently died. Um, so I was sick, other people died. And what are the transhumanists that I'm working for at the time doing? Um, I try to get more people killed. And they say, well, this is just what I believe. I'm entitled to my deeply held beliefs. Now you're not entitled to deeply held beliefs to help murder people. Um, and, uh, you know, and as Zoltan Isfin, the person who stole this name, um, uh, was um, uh, taking a little bit different tack. You know, not all of these CIA assets say exactly the same thing. So he was taking a little different tack from a Gennady Stolyarov, who was um, uh, pushing uh, privatization at that moment. Um, and he was pushing for, you know, um, uh, reinforcing the value of the capitalist economy. Um, so basically saying, you know, that you should die for the Dow, which millions of you did. Um, and, you know, the thing that he was pushing back against was uh, lockdown features, which would have uh, not allowed billionaires to become even richer um, and would have cost um, some of those people uh, some money, but not very much relative to their net worth. Uh, but what it would have done is uh, stop this thing dead in its tracks, just like shutting down the airlines would have stopped this thing dead in its tracks. You never even would have heard of the coronavirus. People that I know, not just people that died because of that contact, uh, uh, family members and loved ones that have uh, died since um, would still be alive. We have never would have even heard of this thing. And, um, um, I mean, we would have heard of it, but, you know, it would be a historical afterthought. And, um, um, but that would have, that means not kowtowing to um, uh, lobbies and private, uh, private wealth, uh, shutting, doing something like shutting down the airline, for-profit airlines, uh, for a couple of days, really, right? Relative to what's happened. Uh, but they're, um, you know, uh, the integrity of, of, of the uh, private wealth, you know, even if um, come hell or high water, uh, that must be protected by fascists. Um, and that's and that's who these people are. And you see um, on this political compass that they're represented as um, 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 being uh, anarcho-capitalists, you know, effectively. But if that's 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 a bogus uh, way of looking at this. As I said, um, uh, the political compass itself is kind of a sham because anarchism provides little value. It's just a, a, a liberal class, a capitalist class tool, um, uh, an anti-communist set of ideologies. So uh, so framing, um, uh, thinking so much around uh, this as an alternative to um, uh, socialism or capitalist institutions um, is, um, is, is, is the height of, of tedium and folly. Um, uh, I mentioned uh, that uh, this uh, party, the Transhumanist Party, was stolen. Uh, I mentioned that uh, some of the people that were um, um, that would have been the rightful owners of it, um, they hadn't uh, copyrighted it. So it wasn't that they had copyrighted it, copywritten it incorrectly, and uh, and Zoltanus and then came along and cop copyrighted it correctly. It just hadn't uh, evolved uh, to that point. Um, uh, so that is how uh, sometimes these things go. So it, is it an overstatement to say it was stolen? Is it an overstatement to say that this is a CIA asset? Um, I don't know, not, maybe not so much. Um, uh, but, but so one of these people, um, I alluded to this before, is somebody who uh, goes uh, by the handle a meta woke. Uh, again, this idea, the, what's, what's the suggestion there? Um, uh, the idea that uh, this, he's transcending uh, your uh, silly ideas of uh, uh, consciousness and class consciousness um, with uh, this uh, more legitimate uh, techno-optimist uh, consciousness. Uh, which is which is which is which is horseshit, um, but almost all of these people will say this in the same breath that they'll say something like we're not left or right or we want to move forward. Um, so you know anybody that's saying the word woke in a dismissive or derisive way is um, is coding white nationalist um, uh, ideology um, because because the term woke uh, comes from African American vernacular um, and is an, and is the idea of uh, broad consciousness raising. Um, that's, that's what this word means. So anybody that's pushing back against that is a crypto-fascist of some kind, right? And a white nationalist 
uh, to some degree. Um, um, and you'll see common people that are calling themselves communists uh, use it, making this the center of their identity, this this word um, a, as a bad word. Um, and and again, you know, there might the case might be made for some communists saying that uh, this focus on um, uh, some uh, uh, liberal class uh, spin on social issues um, is is not the best. Uh, that's to say, there are legitimate concerns with the way that uh, um, uh, words like uh, woke might be used. Uh, but but the people that are actually um, uh, uh, using woke uh, dismissively, you know, there's a hundred ways that you could um, uh, criticize uh, problems of the liberal class without um, blaming black people um, um, uh, uh, for the problem. Uh, you're blaming the victims. Um, so this. Um, uh, the reason that this person was had this stolen from them was not just that this was at early stages and it was just a bad roll of the dice. Uh, also, because uh, the person is not um, uh, fighting for a humane economic system themselves, has a worldview not dissimilar from that of of Zoltan Nisvin. Uh, so, you know, they weren't even really willing or able to stage a defense because it, what's 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 really the loss to them? It's a little loss to them personally, but ideologically, it's it. Um, it's it's quite it's quite similar, and you see you just see that's the problem of of transhumanists. Is there's a lot of infighting, uh, but almost all of these people have almost the same same set of beliefs. Um, you know, so let's 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 go back to um, the transhumanist party in 2019, 2020, when I started to become aware of these things. Uh, there was another person with a campaign slogan uh, that you would say uh, my enemy in 2019 <laughs> um, uh, named. Um, um, uh, uh, Rachel Haywire, and I don't even remember her campaign slogan off the top of my head, but I know that it was the same kind of thing, like this meta woke or this fo not left um, uh, or right, but forward kind of thing. Uh, that's to say, um, this uh, this crypto fascist line dismissive of the need for um, a focus on material conditions and improving um, improving the functioning of civil society. Um, and I remember that it was a little confusing uh, that campaign slogan. It's not that important to. Um, 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 be going after Rachel Haywire for the reasons that I'm about um, uh, to describe, uh, which is that so the chair of the um, um, the Transhumanist Party really did not want Rachel Haywire to be the presidential uh, candidate. Um, I, but I wouldn't say that he put his finger on the scale. Um, you know, he is he is a, a techno fascist, but he wanted to try to run this in a, in a pretty orderly way. Um, but he kind of did put his finger on the scale, right? He's got his finger on the scale of all of the operations here. Um, um, but, um, you know, again, what's what's the difference between Meta Woke and Zoltan Isfin? What's the difference between Gennady Stolyarov and Rachel Haywire? Very, very little, ideologically. Uh, but um, but Gennady Stolyarov's main goal in, um, in, in this was to be a techno-fascist, but to not be perceived as a techno-fascist. Uh, so it's very one of the first things I remember him saying uh, to me was um, uh, we don't want to be uh, thought of as alt right, and my first thought was you know, I didn't say this a lot at the time was maybe you should try not being alt right because <laughs> uh, all of these people are capitalists. Capitalists uh, are right wing. There's no bone. There could be um, uh, no mincing words in this. Um, on a planet that's dying uh, because of capitalism, uh, this idea that there is. Uh, there are people of the capitalist class who are not right wing, or who are not so bad as all that, um, is uh, this um, open secret, this lie that we're all accepting, um, um, that you know, uh, it, it, you cannot afford that to be telling yourself this lie on, on a dying planet. And not, I mentioned that uh, you know this Rand Corporation has been able to uh, figure out this sort of thing about high mind collectivism and. Um, and uh, tech being the most powerful of tools, the, the you know even the stuff that we think of uh, to do with artificial intelligence as being um, entering the public consciousness within the last year or within the last ten or twenty years, depending how you're looking at it, um, they've been able to game this stuff out for quite some time, uh, and it was more or less um, um, a kept from 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 the from the public, and you know and you say oh is it really being kept from the public? Well look at um, um, propaganda posters from the Soviet Union of this period versus propaganda posters from the United States. What do the propaganda posters from the United States overwhelmingly say? 
They say, um, uh, this war that we're starting was going to kill you and the Soviets are going to kill you. Um, that was the Cold War narrative. Soviets are going to kill you. Soviets didn't want to kill you. Uh, just uh, This is all just uh, um, uh, insane theater um, on the part of fascists. Um, but what, did the Russia, what was the Russian propaganda saying? It was saying stuff a little bit more like what I'm saying about high mind collectivism. It was uh, uh, trying to plant the seed uh, for, um, um, uh, you know, the, the Russians, when they were focused on the space race, <laughs> they, they were focused on um, actually uh, uh, trying to um, advance civilization. Um, and, um, and they weren't solely focused on the space race. They were uh, focused on these other things. Um, but um, the, the, um, the computing systems didn't quite exist in, this, in these early, early decades after uh, the Second World War. Um, that, you know, that was something that uh, came into existence. And I've said on the show that um, had uh, world revolution uh, been allowed to spread from uh, Russia to the Soviet states, then to the rest of the world on the, uh, on the path that um, um, Vladimir Lenin um, predicted, uh, which, which could have easily happened, uh, were not um, uh, a fascist actors um, um, literally just waging hot war and, and Cold War and all manner of uh, sabotage and, and propaganda, uh, um, spending every every dollar they had, practically, uh, to do this. Um, um, had, that, had, had those people not been in the equation and had ordinary people uh, had a little bit more gumption um, in recognizing the value of standing for a humane and sustainable economic system, um, um, uh, this revolution would have spread. And then I think that this other timeline would have been compressed. Advanced computing systems uh, would have been developed a few years earlier. There would have been a Ray Kurzweil instead of uh, predicting this in the 80s, maybe in the 1960s, and maybe in the 1990s, uh, we would see we wouldn't be saying uh, um, uh, artificial intelligence singularity in 2045. We would have been saying artificial intelligence singularity in 1995. I believe I believe that that's that's all reasonable reasonable to say, but it's 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 highly speculative. Um, there's no um, there's no algorithm. A predictive model that I have personal access to that uh, could could flesh that out more, <laughs> um, and um, um, so the, the the this this it's not coincidentally then uh, this um, Rand Corporation type thing, uh, this uh, fascist actor uh, State Department asset uh, kind of thing uh, dominating uh, tech and dominating propaganda in the United States that their their supremacy uh, coincides with the period wherein we would say. Um, the earth began to die and has died. Um, uh, so you, you say, um, how do you know, Ben, for certain that um, hive mind collectivism is the thing that will save the earth? Uh, because I know that the people that are fighting against hive mind collectivism um, are the people that are responsible for killing the earth, and the systems that they put in place um, in, in opposition to that um, to slow and undermine that in every way, turn it into a hideous neo-reactionary power um, where, where uh, Peter Thiel is a god emperor of earth um um it, this um uh, this this has been the death of the, the planet the planet is dying because of precisely these kind of people peter Thiel wasn't born yet and this sort of, sort of thing started to happen uh, but he's he is the uh, uh descendant of of people who've been doing this for a long time and um it's unfortunate that we haven't had the language as a society to uh, discuss this it's unfortunate that effectively we still do not um and uh, the focus you know, sometimes I'm reading headlines and bits, I'm going to uh, go to a bit in a second, um, th about uh, the idea of machine consciousness. You know, the, the focus um, of all of these things is quite intentionally uh, to shift your thinking away from um, hive, mind, um, uh, hive mind collectivism. Um, the idea of machine consciousness is uh, crypto-fascistic, I think, um, quite intentionally, uh, because um, it has, a lot of times these things have a kind of um, a dual use for fascists. Um, uh, so um, it has the um, um, by by uplifting um, the um, um, interest in um, in the idea of a machine uh, being uh, you know there's a billion people on this planet uh, who uh, never have proper food. Forget about um, a lifestyle by the standards of the West. There's a billion people on this planet who never have uh, proper food or water even for, for in for their entire life. Um, and they die in a naturally short number of years later uh, because of, of these suboptimal conditions, not adequate drinking water, uh, not adequate food. Uh, think about how sick that is, uh, that that's, uh, that's how this world is arranged. And, um, 
and um, think about how um, all of these people who would tell you that machine consciousness um, is, um, is an important uh, development are not people who are fighting to um, uh, change the economic system wherein um, uh, a billion darker skinned people in the global south, um, uh, their consciousness is squandered. Um, uh, so um, it, it, has, it has this, um, uh, this effect of, um, of shifting focus away from uh, actual sentient creatures and, um, and um, um, humanizing and put it, putting at center stage the mechanical Turk, um, um, an, an exotic figure to be sure, uh, but um, uh, one that is just the, the, the puppet of the fascists. Uh, who have orchestrated all of this theater, and um, and ultimately, I think um, it's it's a, I say it's a dual use for fascists because in a longer timeline, then not, maybe not so much longer, um, uh, you know, life, life itself can, can can increasingly become of less and less value. Um, as um, this is why you know we we should just be focused on the creature, the existence of the creature, and not the existence of consciousness or the soul or the mind. Because um, uh, focusing on those things um, allows for us to um, um, devalue uh, life, and that's going, going to increasingly be the case as the 21st century wears on, uh, but on the path that we're on. All of this is a product of people not being willing to fight for a humane and sustainable economic system, and not being willing uh, to recognize that uh, uh, computing, computer science and um, emerging technology more broadly are the most powerful tools in this uh, much needed techno revolution um, and not being willing to recognize this this political compass flawed as it is uh, that this um, hive mind collectivism is the most important um, end goal of this uh, not not being aware of what uh, um, uh, fascists are doing is the biggest problem for all of us um, but also not being willing uh, to take those positions um, is also is also the very very big problem. Um, so I am um, giving this uh, show some kind of headline uh, that's more suggestive of um, uh, the demonic uh, nature of transhumanism. But this isn't really a conversation about literal demons. Uh, but these people are nevertheless devils in human skin. 